Welcome to the Delhi Sacred Site Rush Build Order Guide. This build is focused on getting Sacred Sites before the 8 minute marks with Delhi. Um, I have kind of been refining this build a little bit since the nerf of Delhi and you can't get the Sacred Sites in Age 1. Delhi has been my favourite civilization due to its unique playstyle and of course, elephants. Sacred Sites are at the core of any build on land maps with Delhi as they get a whopping 200 gold per minute and they can capture them in the second age, which is unique to Delhi Sultanate. Sacred Sites are a great way to get up to Castle Age without having to mine a bunch of gold, so you can start swinging those trunks around with your tower elephants. If you want a written version to my guide, I'll have that available in my Discord, which I'll leave a link to in my description. Lastly, I will post a game of mine where I talk through my thought process and how we pull out the win. I was struggling a lot with Delhi, when the new patch came in, but since kind of refining my approach and learning from the Delhi King, Salami, I'm only a few wins away from reaching the top 100, so hopefully you can learn a thing or two from this build and from the game analysis that I will be posting after this video. Let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start by putting all our villas on berries to begin with, and then our first two villas that we create here are going to build. We're going to build a mosque, we're going to build a house. These guys are going to go back on to berries here. Drop off your sheep and then go out exploring for sheep. First villager, build a mining camp. If you can, have it in the radius of your mosque here. Now, with this mosque placement, I probably could have done this a little bit better. When, when you're kind of starting out in your game you want to assess where your berries are where your gold is and where your wood is and if you're able to you want to have your mosque in the radius of all three so if i put my mosque around here close to my tc it would have reached out to the wood line here i'm probably okay here i can probably build a llama camp right here and it will be in the radius of it so i'm um, not the end of the world but you want to kind of analyze that so once you have um two on gold you want to send your new bills to sheep. And the reason we're doing sheep rather than berries here is to actually decrease the walking time as we are getting closer to the age up. So we want to be as efficient as possible here. Um, these guys on the sheep are also going to build the landmark so they don't have to walk all the way from the berries. So you may notice that I don't have any wood in the bank and you might be wondering why you would do this. Why wouldn't you build a lumber camp before the mining camp? This build is focused on getting up as quickly as possible. So if we build a lumber camp and then have to chop for a mining camp or we skip the moss altogether, um, it's going to delay a lot of things in, in our game plan here. So ideally, once you have the mosque built, you'll re be researching efficient production as soon as possible. I did forget at the beginning, but it's not the end of the world because it's only a two minute tech and we won't be aged up by then. So when we age, we want to be researching sanctity straight away. So we got 10 on food. Now you want to send your next few vills to straggler trees. So I'm just going to pause here for a minute and talk through some different situations at this point that you can make um, decisions based off. So Right now, you can consider aging with anywhere between four, uh, sorry, three to five or even six if you want to, uh, vills on the landmark. And the reason you would put more on the landmark is because you want to get up quicker and you want to get sanctity out faster. Now, personally, I generally go with three villages, but this is going to depend on what civ you're versing and what strategy you're expecting out of your opponent. So if, if your opponent is going for a fast castle build or like something along the lines of Rus or HRE or something like that, what you want to do is you want to age up as quickly as possible because you know they're not going to be putting any pressure on you and the, the consequence of aging up with more bills on the landmark is you're going to be more delayed with your production buildings. But that's okay if they're not going to have any units in your base. You're going to be able to capture the sacred sites say 20 to 30 seconds earlier so in that situation it's definitely going to be worth um investing with uh, building your landmark with more villages here so in this demonstration i'm going to do let's do three villages so 
And this one can come onto wood. Actually gonna bring one vill off of food here and bring it across to wood as well. So we have a total of five on food. And two on gold still. Two on gold are gonna be for the income to build more scholars. And I don't know why he stopped working. Another thing I forgot to do while I was talking through this is getting wheelbarrow. So as soon as you build your mill, uh, you want to be getting wheelbarrow straight away. Um, I'm going to bring my sheep back now. Now ideally around the four minute mark, you'll send your scout across to your enemy side of the base so you can see what he's doing. Maybe even a little bit earlier. Bring your sheep back a little bit earlier than what I've done here and then go across to your enemy side. So now we have enough wood for a lumber camp. Um, we're building that inside of the mosque radius here, the the influence radius. And we're going to send our scout across to the opponent. Now once you get 50 wood, build another house here. And with when you're doing this strategy, or this opening I should say, and you're aging it with three bills. If you've queued your wheelbarrow at the very start of when it was built, you, that will be finished around the exact same time as what you age. So we're getting a solid age up time here, just after four minutes, and that's with only three bills on the mosque. On the... On the Dome of Faith, sorry. Once that, the bills on the Dome of Faith are finished uh, building that, they can come across to food. Once you have around nine vills on wood, depending on what unit you're making, you can decide to either add more onto wood if you're going archers straight away. Otherwise, um, nine is a good number if you want to go horsemen. So in this situation, I'm going to go horsemen. I'm going to build a stable. Research sanctity as soon as you get up. Another thing is professional scouts. Now, a lot of people don't think to go professional scouts with Delhi. Um, I find it's a really good option to go for if you're up against someone who's more aggressive in age 2. For example, the English. I will actually post another video or maybe add it to the end of this one to show you a game that I played against the English. And many times when I versed the English, Professional Scouts has saved me. So once you've built that stable and you've got 150 wood, you want to go ahead and build a blacksmith. Now, we want to, as Delhi, you want to be getting blacksmiths as early as possible, just because it's a free tech and it takes a fair bit longer. So, at this stage, if you are under a lot of pressure, I recommend putting your scholar inside of the military building here, so you can start producing at twice the speed, and you don't need to invest the wood into another production building. Which then, it actually gives you room to put down either another blacksmith or a second, um, different military building early on. If you are under pressure at this stage of the game, and they're making, say, Archer Pike, you can drop down a another um, military building, for example, a um, archery range. So keep producing scholars this whole time. Um, now... Now that we're, we're taking professional scouts, so I generally I like to open stable because we can actually produce scouts from there. So now we have enough for an archery range, let's build that. And considering we're building an archery range, you want to consider putting more bills onto wood here. So once you've built the blacksmith, just continue getting your techs. And if you are under pressure at this stage of the game, and say major they have too many pikes for you to deal with, um, you can just swap or add another scholar out of here into your archery range as well. So now you can double produce. It's likely you're not going to have the income to efficiently produce for an extended period of time out of both of these buildings. Um, so if you aren't producing like horsemen constantly, you might want to consider taking the scholar out and putting it in the mosque so your techs um, research a little bit faster. So that's the opening build order. Um, from here, you kind of... Professional Scouts is just about in, so we're going to make some Scouts now. And then, we, then we can start getting some Hunts here. So, from now, 
if you're in a good position to capture sacred sites, if you're if you've been fighting or whatnot and you you you're on top, you have the military lead. You want to start sending your scholars out to capture the sacred sites. Um, generally, if there's one sacred site that's really far away, it's worth going to that and even potentially sending a build to build a tower. So from here, if I have a good military advantage, I will actually start gathering some stone as well with, say, two or three villages. The reason I start gathering stone is because we want to upgrade these towers. So once you're fighting and, say, you're doing well, um, you can now start building towers. And so we're starting to capture the sacred site, build a tower, and once these guys have built the tower, we'll actually have enough resources from stone to upgrade to arrow slits or the like. So oh, damn, I'm losing my scouts here as I'm talking. God damn dark age rush from the AI. So at this stage, there's quite a lot to think about when you are playing Delhi. You want to be built, bringing back hunts with your scouts. You want to be securing sacred sites. If you want, you can uh, say if, for example, in this game, I would consider walling like this and potentially even adding in more towers. So now we can get arrow slits as well. And this is going to prevent your enemy from actually taking the sacred sites. Now keep in mind, in order to do this, you're probably going to need like an equal massive army, which is very possible to do, because um, you have efficient production, you've got pretty good techs in as well, like eco techs, um, so you should have no worries securing some of the sacred sites at this stage of the game. Like I said before, if you are against someone who's planning on fast castling, maybe you don't need to invest a lot into units, you can just... Uh, focus on like walling up and stoning up these sacred sites um, and because you got up faster you're actually able to capture the sacred sites at around eight minutes um, which is something that this build order allows you to do um, there is another sacred site but I haven't scouted that again if you're in a real game here you want to be scouting the sacred sites making sure you know where that, that they all are you also want to be identifying where the relics are because it's likely when you get these sacred sites, you'll have more on food. So if I was in a real game right now, I would have put more on food because we're, we might be fighting, but we're getting free gold. So with that free gold, we can use that to age up. And that's it. That covers the guide. That is what I find to be the most efficient opening with Delhi at the moment to get an early, um, early sanctity in. Um, and start with your age 2 techs earlier as well. There's a lot of benefits to getting to age 2 quicker because in age 1, the only real um, eco tech you can get is wheelbarrow. You can get forestry as well, but that that tech itself is not very not very useful. I wouldn't re recommend like even getting it with um, a sieve you have to pay for it um, until the later stages of the game. It's just not worth it in the early uh, early game. So when we age, we can actually start getting the, the other lumber upgrades, your mining upgrades, and your professional scouts as well. Now, keep in mind, professional scouts is a little bit more risky um, if you're up against someone like the Rus. You can still secure some of your hunts, but you, you're, it's going to be more delayed compared to their professional scouts, right? Um, that's pretty uh, obvious and self-explanatory because Rus, um, they're... Like, Rus and China especially, they're going to get their their professional scouts checked in a lot earlier. Um, but nonetheless, it's probably still worth it going professional scouts and securing, say, one to one and a half um, bat patches of deer compared to horticulture. Just because you're not going to... Horticulture isn't going to be benefiting you that much in the early stages, whereas professional scouts could secure you up to... How much is a deer? A deer is... 350 food, so 7 deers, that's like 2,000 food there. So securing 2,000 food or two, over 2,000 food is going to be more beneficial for you over the the 3.5 minutes of an extra 15% collect rate on food. You can obviously just tech that in right after you get professional scouts, so yeah.
Generally speaking, a great approach for Delhi in the feudal age is to focus on massing your army until you're able to capture sacred sites and use that gold to get up to castle age. In early castle age, tower war elephants are extremely effective, especially if your opponent is still in age 2, tanking almost anything that your opponent throws at you. But one thing to note is they aren't great if they're the only unit you're making. Mixing in archers for more efficient DPS, men at arms for tanking, and pikes if your enemy has knights are all viable options. From my experience, Delhi has the steepest learning curve of any civilization, so you'll need to practice and it will take time to theorycraft your strategies to deal with whatever your opponent is throwing at you. But for me, this is the most rewarding part about Delhi. It's almost impossible to cover everything in terms of strategy as it's evolving all the time. But if you have any questions, jump in my Discord as I'm very active there. Plus, there are a bunch of other people in the community that can help answer your questions. If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.